welcome and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> to those of you who follow the tradition, rabbit, rabbit, on the first day of the month, and blessings for all saints. Uh, Rob, do you have any uh, announcements you would like to make at this time? Thank you, Noel. Yes, welcome everyone. Welcome uh, members, guests, and friends from near and far for our service of, of uh, right to morning prayer for All Saints Day. We are also having after this service at noon in Saunderstown outside, um, a communion service for All, Sir, All Saints Day with the blessing of the bricks. Uh, the blessing of the bricks is something that we do each year as we continue in the tradition started by the Chapel Foundation, where we have uh, memorials and, and thanksgivings on bricks in our walkway uh, leading up to the chapel. So I, we already have um, nine people signed up for that service. There's room for a couple more. If, if you would like to join us, uh, please let me know. It looks like the rain is going to hold off until two or three this afternoon. So we should be fine with our, our outdoor service. Um, I do not believe that, I can't re quite recall, Noel, whether we had other things that we announced at eight o'clock. Well, I will just mention again the uh, Compline on election night at eight o'clock offered by the bishop in a virtual cathedral. And I will send the link for that as soon as it's available. Thank you. Um, certainly, as election day is approaching, if you are finding yourself to be anxious on election day, we invite you to come for a quiet prayer in the chapel individually anytime during the day. Also, if the weather is decent, you might want to come for a walk in our labyrinth at Ascension. Um, those are some good ways to get away from the uh, constant barrage of, of anxiety on the news on, on election day. There are other offerings like that Compline service that are being offered as well. And we are, uh, after the governor's announcement on Friday, we are still um, okay, as far as I know, to go forward with our, our in-person communion services in the parish halls um, starting next Sunday. So look for more information to come on those services um, in addition to our primary services, which are our principal services, which are these online morning prayer services. I believe, um, I believe that's all we have for this morning. So let's begin. I would say for those of you who are joining us uh, on the phone, our service of morning prayer begins on page 80 in your prayer book. And the first hymn is hymn 287 uh, in the 1982 hymnal.
make sure to hear the tone there. It's not, the speaker is not working. Mm -hmm. well, I'm trying to fix it. Don't take it. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the prayer book on page 79, if you're following by phone, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We'll say together the Vanity, which is found on page 82 in the prayer book. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come. Let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 34, beginning on page six to seven verses 1 to 10 and 22. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Now, Paula, if you will unmute and read from, read the first lesson for us. A reading from the Revelation to John. After this, I, John, looked 
and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We'll say together Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, from the prayer book, page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the most high for he will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Nina, if you will unmute and read for us. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Now we'll sing together hymn 656. Six.
reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I'm going to stop screen sharing and give Rob the screen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever wondered why we read the Beatitudes of Jesus every year on All Saints Day? I believe it is because the Beatitudes outline the hopes of faith for Christians and form the basis for what we consider saints. And that should be good news for all of us. For example, Jesus promises in two places in these Beatitudes, theirs. I got it. What is a greater hope for a Christian than possessing the kingdom of heaven? Isn't that exactly what it means to be a saint, to have the kingdom of heaven as your own? Isn't that what we're all striving for? So when Jesus says, theirs is the kingdom of heaven, he refers in the second case to those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. And we certainly understand that what he's talking about there are those who are persecuted for his sake, those who suffer for believing in Jesus, who are harmed because of their very faith, those who are threatened for living a life that is good and faithful to the teachings of Jesus. Those who were persecuted for doing good, for living the truth, those are the ones that we often record as saints. If you looked at the image that started our slides for this morning, you saw an image from an icon of All Saints. And if you looked closely at that, you'd see how many of those men and women were martyred, were persecuted, and even lost their lives for the sake of the gospel. Martyrdom is and was for the longest time the most clear example of what it meant to be a saint. While we enjoy great freedom to worship God in this country, we don't really experience persecution for our faith here. Although we can experience persecution for doing something that is good, for the pursuit of truth, for example. So we might be inclined to believe that the age of martyrdom for Christians ended a long time ago. But there are places in the world today where many Christians are being persecuted and even martyred 
simply for believing in Jesus and being unwilling to deny him in the face of persecution. So it's for their sake that today is also the International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians. An organization Tasha and I learned about at the Global Missions Conference we went to in 2019 called the Voice of the Martyrs promotes this International Day of Prayer and encourages us to pray for persecuted Christians around the world today in particular. What better day to do that, to pray for those who are facing martyrdom for their faith than the day that we remember those who have been martyred for their faith. You know, the chief thing that people who are persecuted for their faith ask for when they're asked, what can other Christians in the world do to help you? The chief thing they say is, pray for us. Because they know that prayer is effective and a powerful weapon against persecution. I want to share with you a short video that shows one place where Christians are currently persecuted. My name is Jeanette. I am a Christian and I love Jesus with all my heart. I love my children and I love the people of my country, the Central African Republic. There are both Christians and Muslims in my country and we lived as neighbors as I worked to reach them for Christ. But my hope for a peaceful life didn't last. Our village was ambushed by the Islamist attackers Guns started firing, and we started running as fast as we could into the bush. All the Christians in my village were killed or driven into hiding. I fled with my children. We didn't even have time to put on our shoes or clothes. Attacks like these have been targeting Christians in the Central African Republic for eight years and continue today. Churches and missionary stations that have been built over decades have been destroyed along with Christians' homes that have been burnt to the ground. In one area, the only structures that remained were the metal roofs of two churches. Thousands of Christians have spent years in makeshift temporary shelters far from their homes as the violence and instability continues. Delivering desperately needed help to displaced Christians often means overcoming impassable roads, using cargo planes, trucks, motorcycles, bicycles, and even canoes. With God's help, supplies are making it to Christians scattered throughout various camps. Today, Jeanette and more than 30,000 Christians in the Central African Republic have been driven from their homes all because of their faithfulness in maintaining a witness for Christ in majority Muslim areas in the face of severe Islamist violence. These courageous believers, our Christian brothers and sisters in the Central African Republic, have shown God's love and forgiveness to their persecutors. They continue to faithfully follow the Lord and trust Him to meet their needs. Christ, our hope.
So let's consider how we should think about persecution. Of course, general troubles in our fallen world are a type of suffering that every person experiences. Both believers and non-believers lose their jobs, get life-threatening illnesses, even face violence from time to time. But suffering for the sake of righteousness is a specific opposition that every disciple, no matter where they live, may experience as a result of their bold and faithful witness. Jesus said, remember, if the world hates you, it hated me first. He said that in the Gospel of John. So how do we distinguish between these two types of suffering? Persecution for righteousness sake follows this pattern. It's very simple. Christian faith or someone with Christian faith is the beginning. Someone who, whose faith results in the action of a bold and faithful witness to Christ. You add to that a persecutor, an individual or a group opposed to the witness of Christ and his message. Add to that an attack by that persecutor or group. Now the motive of the attack is an opposition that intends to silence the witness and the attacks may be varied. It could be as simple as forcing someone out of a job just because they're a Christian. It could be as severe as violence or murder. It could be simply withholding food from a group of people because they're Christian. Any sort of attack that has the motive of silencing the witness of people who seek to share Christ is persecution for righteousness sake. Today, our brothers and sisters in Christ are experiencing the suffering of persecution because of their bold and faithful witness each day in over 70 hostile areas and restricted nations. Missionaries refer to some nations as restricted nations because those are nations where it is actually illegal to practice the Christian faith. It is our privilege then to stand with them by lifting the needs of these persecuted Christians to the throne of grace. But many believers wrestle with the question, especially in this country, does my prayer really matter? I have a story for you about a man named Peter Yasek. He was working with the Voice of the Martyrs to help aid and assist persecuted Christians in hostile areas and restricted nations for more than 20 years. His background in hospital administration was beneficial in his role overseeing Voice of the Martyrs efforts to provide medical care to Christians who had been injured by Boko Haram attacks in Nigeria. You might have heard of Boko Haram. It comes up in our news frequently. These are some people that are militants and violent against Christians. As Peter traveled to meet with persecuted believers, he encouraged them with stories from his own experience because he grew up as the son of a pastor who was persecuted in communist Czechoslovakia. Notice that the situations in the world change and so persecution changes its location. In December of 2015, not very long ago, Peter's life changed dramatically when he was arrested at the airport in Khartoum, Sudan, after meeting with Christians there to evaluate how Voice of the Martyrs could best serve them. Instead of continuing his work with imprisoned Christians and their families, Peter became a prisoner himself. Instead of delivering aid to families of persecuted Christians, Peter needed Voice of the Martyrs to help and support his own family. The Czech government negotiated Peter's release after his conviction and a life sentence on charges of espionage, and they released him in February of 2017. Notice that in these restricted nations, a lot of times they'll use a trumped up charge like espionage when what they really mean is spreading the gospel. Peter in prison experienced times of discouragement, of course, but he also found God's faithfulness to be real and true while he was in prison. He turned his imprisonment into an opportunity to grow in Christ, sharing his faith with others around him and encouraging the Christians who were imprisoned with him. 
throughout Peter's 445 days in prison in the Sudan, Voice of the Martyrs and Christians around the world stood with his family through prayer and other means of support. So does my prayer really matter? Listen to what Peter said. He said, the more I felt emotionally depleted in this prison, the more the Lord lifted me up through the restorative power of his word, through the healing presence of his spirit, and through the ministry he allowed me to have in the Al Huda prison chapel. I also knew that my church back home in the Czech Republic was praying and fasting regularly for me. I could feel their prayers. I had not been forgotten by them, and I had not been forgotten by God. I found myself right in the Lord's will and purpose. So as we pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters, let us lift them boldly to the throne of grace, even when we think our prayers don't matter. And this is where we are linked in the Beatitudes themselves to those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Because when we believe that our prayers don't matter, when we believe that our faith is not enough, we find ourselves in the position of those who are poor in spirit, of those who are lacking in the very thing that we believe is most important. And what does Jesus say about those who are poor in spirit? The same as he says about those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, he says theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So that's very good news for us. And it links us together with those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. We who are poor in spirit are those who should be praying the most for those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Because for both of us, ours is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven binds us in prayer to one another. And our prayers, though we are poor in spirit, are strengthened by the Holy Spirit himself until they are so powerful when lifted up on behalf of those who are suffering that they can feel it, even thousands of miles away. Surely you might think sometimes, not me, I can't pray for others. I'm not that special. My faith isn't that strong. But that's exactly the beginning of being poor in spirit. It's when we recognize our lack that we can allow God to shine through more clearly. Remember, God says in the scriptures, my power is made perfect in weakness. It is the experience of deprivation that can be, by God's grace, the harbinger of great abundance. It is exactly because we don't seem to have much to offer that God's kingdom can shine through us. And in fact, that is God's plan. We can say to God, I don't have much to offer your people. Make something of my prayers that displays your power, your kingdom. As we remember the saints in our lives today, those people that we have known, those people that we've followed in our lives, let us pray as well for those who are suffering for righteousness sake. Let us pray for Jeanette and her family, for the strength to endure until they can return home. Let us pray that God's kingdom will shine through us so that the kingdom will be made greater by our lives through our prayers. God has great abundance in store for the world. And if we are just willing to offer to God our own spiritual poverty, God will bring that kingdom abundance through us to others. Amen. Amen. Oh,
please join in the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 96 in the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue on page 97. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. <clears throat> and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys <clears throat> that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant the people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Nina, if you would unmute and read for us, the Lead the prayers for us, please. Prayers of the people are form three, found on page three, eight, 387 in your prayer book. 
I invite you to start our prayers with your thanksgivings. We give thanks today for those having birthdays, especially Martha Edwards, and for those celebrating wedding anniversaries. Please take a moment to offer your own thanksgivings. Father, thank you for our partner parishes, Chapel of St. John the Divine and Church of the Ascension, and we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Remembering especially those who work for equality, grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. Remembering Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Nicholas, our bishop, Gordon and Hayes, our priests Rob and Noel, Nancy, our intern, we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remembering Donald, our president, Gina, our governor, and our legislators, and those in our courts. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us patience, personal peace, and grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Comfort the lonely and have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Facing the coronavirus, we pray for all who mourn their dead, for the millions who have contracted the virus, for all who are quarantined, for those who are stranded away from home, for those who have lost their employment, for those who fear the present and the future, for children who may not assemble for school, for those children attending school in person and their teachers and support staff, for parents with needs for childcare, for physicians, nurses, and home health aides, for hospitals and clinics, first responders, for volunteers who are serving their communities, for medical researchers, for the World Health Organization, for adequate and wise governmental policies. We remember those who have commended themselves to our prayers, Chris, Alyssa, Angie, Brian, Jim, Lizzie, Shirley Southwick, Nancy Blydenberg, Verda Tarbox, Marion Andrews, Bob Dumas, Sigrid Hewitt, Dorothea LaBelle, Donna, Donald Edward Dubowski, Alex McBurney, Charles Allen, Erilyn Barnum, William Briggs, Annette F. Harper, Doug Clark, William A. Jones, Senior Bishop, Ward Just, Lee Ong, Helen Kirby, Leslie Laughlin, Laughlin Jr., Priest, Zachary Rockwell, Susan Sam, Sampson, Margaret Castles, Janet Fraley, Cahoon, Jane St. Cour, Janice Post, Eleanor Fraley, Irving Sheldon, and those we name before you now, silently in our hearts or aloud. Please add Anne to your prayers. We pray for Janet or Jeanette and her family in the Central African Republic and for all Christians who are persecuted. We remember those who have died, especially those we honor on this All Saints Day. Shirley Southwick, Nancy Blydenberg, Verda Tarbox, Marion Andrews, 
Bob Dumas, Sigrid Hewitt, Dorothea LaBelle, Donald Edward Dubowski, Alex McBurney, Charles Allen, Erilyn Barnum, William Briggs, Annette F. Harper, Doug Clark, and William A. Jones Sr., Bishop, Ward Just, Lee Ong, Helen Kirby, Leslie Laughlin Jr. Priest, Zachary Rockwell, Susan Sampson, Margaret Castles, Janet Fraley Lahoon, Cahoon, Janet St. Cor, Cor, Janet Post, Eleanor Fraley, and Irving Sheldon. We pray for those who have died from racial violence, those who have died from the coronavirus, victims of natural disasters around the world, and those we name before you now, silently in our hearts or aloud. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together the general thanksgiving on page 101 in the prayer book. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Yeah, I'm coming. Let's sing together hymn 618.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. And grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but the truth and too small for anything but love. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you forever. Amen.